Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Another one of those little Bible ifs. It's a clause, a conditional clause. You reap if you don't faint. All right? And there have been a lot of preachers out there that started out really, really good. And they were preaching the word and doing a great job. And all of a sudden, there is that pretty girl again showed up. Boy, you know, I'd like to talk to her sometime. And you start to let your mind go. And you start, lust is conceived. And it brings forth sin. You know? And all of a sudden, that good, great preacher has committed adultery. And now his whole ministry falls apart. His whole life falls apart. His marriage busts up and everything else. And he dies some miserable, drunken bum out on the streets. You think he's going to reap the rewards for the good labor that he did? No. Why? He did. He fainted. You know. It says there, if we faint not, he got messed up. As a Christian, when you get to serving the Lord, you better keep with that thing. And that's why if you see, hey, the Lord's leading me in this direction, you don't say, well, tough apples, I'm just going to keep doing this whole thing myself. I'm just going to run this thing into the ground. No, 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 no. You stay open to the Lord's leading. And if the Lord leads you in some direction and he's definitely opened the door there and he's telling you go that way, you better go that way or else you're going to run that ministry into the ground. The ministry that the Lord has called you into. You better be open to the Lord's leading. Go back to Titus. Back to the book of Titus. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 9. Here's another little kick against some of the emails that I regularly receive. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. You know what a lot of the emails I receive are? They're unprofitable and vain. I get these people, they're Hebrew roots people. What about this? What about that? Can you answer this? Can you answer that? Here's an article that you should look up. Here's this. Here's a... You know, a lot of people think when I say, when I kick email, they think I'm kicking them personally. I'm not. There are some emails that I have enjoyed. I like to hear from people that, you know, I like to hear from people that write me and they say, hey, brother, I just, you don't have to respond to this, but I just want to say you've been a real blessing, you know, Blah, blah, blah. Could you do a sermon on such and such? Praise the Lord. I have no problem with an email like that. What I have a problem with and what I get regularly is right here in verse 9. Foolish questions, genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law. And what are they? They're unprofitable and vain. It's a waste of my time. People trying to dissuade me from the work that God has called me to do. You have to answer me. You have to answer. You have to answer. You better answer me. If you don't answer me, you're a heretic and I'm going to make videos about you calling you a heretic. Wasting my time. That's what these people want to do. I am called into video ministry. I am called to get the word of God out to people. All right? I didn't say I'm not going to ever, you know, I'm cutting off email and you can never even contact me. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you, your foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, they're unprofitable and vain. I'm not going to waste my time on that stuff. All right? What about this? What about that? You know, hey, if you see some things and you really have a great cause and a great, you know, truth thing and whatever, make your own videos. I mean, why are you hiding behind me? You know, Brian has to be our spokesman. He's our spokesman. Put him out there. He can be the one out in the battle getting shot at. I'm just going to stay behind the scenes and shoot at him privately through email. <laughs> okay. You know, that's scriptural. You know, put your own face out there on the internet. You know, make your own videos. See how it goes. And if you do and you get up to the level where the Lord's really blessing you, I'll remind you when you're starting to get a thousand emails a week. I'll remind you what it's like. When you start to get worn out. Titus chapter 3 verse 10 and 11. Having a good time today. Uh, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Knowing that he that is uh, such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. What did we read earlier there in 2 Timothy chapter 2? They oppose themselves. Being condemned of himself. 
You see it? You see that there? Somebody comes along and they're just proud, arrogant. They know everything. You know nothing. You can't correct these people. You say, hey, you know, you ought to think about such. Oh, you know what you're talking about? You know, you ought to think, really need to think about this first. Don't know what you're talking about. Drop it. Drop it at that point. And especially true of lost people. You start messing around with lost people and, and you start to witness to them and things like that. And they start to rebuke back and everything else. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya. Sorry. But this also applies to saved people. There are saved people that can get into heresy. And if you try to admonish them and they don't want anything to do with it, leave. Go away. You know, I've often said that a lot of these guys that are in, you know, church buildings, they call them churches, and of course you know my stand, a lot of these guys that are in there, a lot of times are very ignorant of the issue of what is a real true church, the house church movement and all that stuff. They're ignorant. Okay, many times they're ignorant of the Bible version issue. They're using some new version because they've been to seminary. They've had their mind twisted into Alexandrian philosophy. They really don't know. But I've seen these guys and people will come to them and they'll give them the truth. And I have seen, I have known personally of a number of pastors that have changed their stands because the truth was presented to them. Praise the Lord. And I believe a guy like that will eventually be led out of that church building mentality and movement and return to the New Testament ideal of a house church system, especially as persecution comes upon the church buildings, upon these buildings that are out there. They're going to be more and more controlled. They are government entities already. And as more of that happens, you're going to see the true pastors going whoop and pulling out of that thing and saying, okay, I'm not allowed to preach the word anymore in this building here, so... We're going to return back to a place where I can preach the word without having to answer to anybody but the Lord. See, that's going to happen. But if you have some man up there in the pulpit and you come to him and you say, uh, Pastor so-and-so, let me just show you what the Bible says. And he just sits back in his chair and he says, uh, well, I've dealt with your kind before. You know, I don't take it seriously. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you need to just get back. Maybe maybe you should take some courses, you know, at the local Bible college. And I've dealt with those kind, you know, so I know. You know what I would do to a guy like that? Two admonitions, then reject him. You know why? Because it says here in verse 11, he that is such is subverted. Another way you could say it is perverted, and I don't mean sexually. His mind's messed up, subverted, Alexandrian school of thought, you know, all that stuff. Independent fundamental Baptist Catholicism. His mind's subverted. It's leaving him. And sinneth, being condemned of himself. I told the story before, but the last Bible building I was going to, we got in an argument with the pastor there, the hireling, and he said, this is my church and this is my pulpit, and I say what goes here. Isn't it interesting because when he hits the judgment seat of Christ, hey Lord, I was a preacher for you for all those years. And the Lord will say, I have a little thing to play for you here. You see, on such and such a night you said something and you basically sealed your fate there. Play it. This is my church, this is my pulpit, and I say what goes here. So it wasn't my church. It was yours. It was your show that you were putting on there, your production. Sorry, no rewards. You had your reward down there on the earth. You had your worship of men. See? A heretic, you admonish him two times, and if you're going to some church building out there and your pastor is using new versions or he's using, he's 501c3 or he's whatever, and you admonish him, you do it two times. The third time is you leaving, walking out the door. Why? What are you going to sit in a place like that for? If he can't handle simple truths of this being God's book, the King James Bible being God's book, and he can't handle that, and he can't handle the fact of not being under government enslavement, you know, the government has no right telling a group of Christians what to do, okay? 
in terms of how to interpret the Bible or whatever. Some parts are hateful and you shouldn't preach that. Uh-uh, you stay out of that. That's The government has no right to come into that you know, realm, okay? The government is there to punish evildoers, all right? If you're doing good, they have no right to mess around with you. But you see, when you have that situation there where you're in one of these buildings and that guy will not be admonished, leave. Because you can't trust a guy like that with expounding the truth. He's going to get more and more and more twisted as time goes by. But let's continue here. Uh, verse 12 and 13. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. Hmm. Both verses had the word diligent. Diligent and diligently. Let's see the Webster's 1828 Dictionary definition of the word diligent. Okay, definition. There's two definitions. Number one, steady in application to business, constant in effort or exertion to accomplish what is undertaken, assiduous, attentive, industrious, not idle or negligent, applied to persons. Then it quotes Proverbs uh, 22 there. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. The second definition is steadily applied, prosecuted with care and constant effort, careful, assiduous, as make diligent search. And it quotes Judges 19, the judges shall make diligent inquisition. All right. Did you know that that's a good explanation of a real true ministry? A real true ministry should be diligent. Steady in application to business, constant in effort or exertion to accomplish what is undertaken. Assiduous, attentive, industrious, not idle or negligent applied to persons. Paul was saying to Titus, you're supposed to be diligent. Hey, you know, uh, be diligent to come unto Nicopolis. Be diligent. Don't be hasty and kind of, well, I don't know if I should. Don't be double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're supposed to be diligent. And you see, I am I was failing there before I made the decision about the email thing. Why? I couldn't be diligent. I could not say, I need to get these videos done. I need to get to, because it was like, I got to answer email. I mean, you answer, I mean, spend about five or six hours answering emails on 40, 50 different subjects and see how much energy you have at the end of the thing. I mean, it'll wipe you out. I mean, just, you, I mean, I, I did it a couple times. It was just, I mean, out, out of it, you know. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It takes a whole lot of time. And you say, well, I think you should do Okay, start your own emailing ministry, all right? Do it. Go ahead. But you see, a ministry is supposed to be diligent. Paul was writing to Titus there saying you need to be diligent. That's what I want to do in this ministry. I want to be diligent about bringing out more videos. And, of course, we will be. Um, look at verse 14. Another very important verse here. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Okay? I want you to notice two types of good works in this passage. Number one, you have good works for necessary uses. That's the good works that you want to do. And of course, remember the whole sense of the passage here. You go back to verse 1, ready to every good work. That's the, that is the whole structure of what happens after you get saved. Okay, You are bought with a price. Your life is not your own. You are to glorify God with your life. You are there, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you have two different types of good works that can come. Number one, you have those good works for necessary uses. But number two... Uh, for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. Did you know that there are good works that you can do that are unfruitful? You say, like what? A groundskeeper at a big church building? So, oh, now, come on, Brian. You're, you're really attacking the church buildings. Yeah, and I will always continue to attack those because I went through it. For years and years and years, we'd go down to the local Bible building where I used to go, Liberty Baptist Church. I'd go down there. Can we go out on the street and pass out tracks? Well, yeah, we need the, the one room painted and, and uh, you know, we need to 
you know, consider ripping up the carpet because it's just not attractive anymore and, and we need to do some landscaping and can you mow the lawn? And we got some dead trees down there on the tree line and we got to go down and cut those trees and, and could you do this and could you do that? And we got to make it look pretty. <sighs> how many times, I, how many hours I wasted? I remember we had an evangelist came in, Cliff Burwell was his name, and he said, if you're walking out through the yard of your church and you see an old soda bottle laying out there and you grab that thing and put it in the trash, you will receive a reward. Chapter and verse. You know what you'd be better off doing? Let the building fall to pieces and get out there and preach the word. Mm -hmm. You know, if I wanted a worthless ministry... I'd go get some church building someplace and start a big ministry there and have all the cameras and everything and everything set up there and have a big worldwide ministry and, and get ourselves so in debt to the banks that we have to be begging for money and things like that. That's what I'd do if I wanted a worthless ministry. And I'd hire all kinds of people. We'd have whole teams of people to answer your emails. We'd have a prayer hotline and we'd have a... I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. This ministry probably will never grow beyond my wife and I. We can get things done here. We can get the word out to people with the little effort that we have here. The little bit of a, a ministry that we have. We are never going to be 501c3 and we are never going to copyright our videos. Everything that we do can be distributed freely. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm just not going to support a ministry like that. Okay, go out and find one that does the same thing that we do and support them. Because there's just lots and lots and lots of video ministries out there that put out ministry material for free, you know, and that have no, you know, that have giant buildings that are worth a million dollars and they need to pay the mortgage and everything else. You know, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. But you see there the thing about you want to do good works in this life for necessary uses. And I've talked about this in other sermons, the thing of supporting ministries. There are ministries that you're not going to be able to do. That's the purpose of donation. That's the purpose of support. Okay? Why? Turn here one other place. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 uh, verse 14 we'll start there. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Notice that. Look at verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. That is why you donate to ministries. If you see a ministry that is doing good work for the Lord, you say, I want to have a part of that. I see fruit. Remember back there in Titus chapter 3, it said, good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. You see? See, there's a lot of people that are going to these big Babel buildings. Again, the one I used to go to there, it was huge. Multi-million dollar place. They'd gone through numerous splits, you know, Pastors had problems and stuff. Newer splits, it had gone from like nine hundred dollars, yeah, nine hundred dollars, nine hundred members in its heyday. Jack Hiles would preach there. Jerry Falwell was preaching there. Went from nine hundred members. They had a Christian school and all kinds of stuff. Went down to about thirty members. All right, and here they are. They're hanging on to this building with a death grip because see they can't sell it because it's a government entity. You know, five hundred one c three. Look that up too. A five hundred one c three building is not owned by the people, it's owned by the federal government. That's why you can't sell them. But anyways, they're holding on to this multi-million dollar building and they're just paying out all these bills and everything else. The fire alarm system could not have passed an inspection. The parking lot had huge potholes in it and all this other stuff. And it was just like, we got to hold on to this thing. We got to hang on. Someday, you know, we're going to have a great revival and it's going to come back. We're going to bring things back the way that used to be in the glory days. And those people are pumping their money into this dead building. For what? See, they were trying to do good works for necessary uses, but it was 
not for necessary uses. It was failing, and they were becoming unfruitful as a result. They weren't reaching anybody through that thing. So what you do is you look for a ministry and you say, is this ministry producing fruit? Hey, give you a couple good ones. Local church Bible publishers. Do they produce fruit? Oh, yeah. They produce some really good fruit. Fellowship Track League. Are they producing fruit? You better believe it. Putting out tracks for free. You can write to them and say, I'd like some tracks. They'll send them to you for free. You don't even have to pay for them. That's a good ministry. A ministry that is worthy of your money. Your donations. Why? So that some of that fruit that they have from the ministry can abound to your account. You do good works for necessary uses so that you're not unfruitful. So that you get to heaven and you actually have some rewards instead of getting there by the skin of your teeth and having nothing. And for those brethren out there, the brothers and sisters that donate to King James Video Ministries, look at what the Lord is doing with this ministry. There is fruit coming from the ministry. And that fruit can abound to your account. So that you don't get up to heaven and have nothing. So that you're not unfruitful. And I want to say one other thing here quickly. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, it says here, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. All right. I am not doing anything unscriptural by saying, Please donate to the ministry. All right. It is my perfect right and duty as a elder that labors in the word and doctrine to say to people, if you want to support, I don't force people. There's no monthly subscription that you have to be part of to get into the website or the special members section, you know. I don't waste my time on that stuff. There are brethren out there that support the ministry, and I praise God for them. We pray for them every night for God's blessing to be upon those that donate to the ministry. And I know people have contacted me and said that God has blessed them for donating to this ministry. Praise the Lord for that. All right. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of some of the people that are coming onto this channel and attacking me and saying that this thing is all about money. If you don't have any more spiritual discernment than that, then I'm just going to be quite frank with you. I need to start moving forward with this thing, and I'm not going to pay much attention to you. And in fact, you might get kicked off this channel. Why? You have no respect. I mean, you come to the channel, you learn from the videos, you watch everything, it's absolutely free, and then you make fun of me. And you start to put me down. See, it's just as much false doctrine. If you come onto my channel and start to, you know, I had, a, I had a guy actually, it's been subscribed to my channel for a long time, and he posted a link to Stephen Anderson, one of Stephen Anderson's videos. Stephen Anderson is a false prophet, a very wicked little false prophet. And you know what that got him? It got him banned from my channel. Why? I don't want people being led to Steven Anderson by this link that the guy put up. You're off the channel. Simple. All right? And you see, you come to the channel and you start to espouse false doctrine. It's just as much false doctrine to say that a preacher, a man that's putting out the word of God, is not allowed to take donations and it's all about money and stuff. That's just as much false doctrine as if you came on here and said that hell is not literal fire or that we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble or whatever. You are espousing false doctrine. All right? And I'm going to get rid of you. Why? Because you're hurting the ministry. You're lying about me while coming here and benefiting from the studies that I put out. I'm not going to put up with that, to be very frank. I'm going to start kicking people off the channel. This ministry, you know what I want? I want people that come here that know the book that know the Word of God. And I've seen this thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing when I see this. I see somebody making, making a comment, having a question in the comments section, and I see my brothers and sisters in Christ, not my followers, my brothers and sisters in Christ many times that know the Bible better than I do, and they come and they answer that person, and they give them Scripture. You see? What are you, what are you doing? You're a fellow laborer with me. You're coming and you're helping out the ministry. You're adding something to the ministry. You are an asset to King James Video Ministries, not a liability. I don't want liabilities. I don't need liabilities. People coming here and attacking me personally. You know, if you want to attack me personally, have at it. 
start your own channel, get your own camera, video equipment, all the other stuff, start your own ministry. It's just as simple as that. But let's finish up here. Titus chapter 3, verse 15. All that are with me, salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Great way to finish the chapter there. Great way to finish the study of the book of Titus. Please keep in mind, your job here on this earth as a Christian is to be diligent about the things of the Lord. And, you know, I know a lot of us talk about this thing, and it's, it's something I think about more and more. And that is, you know, salute them. You know, I salute all of you, and a lot of you say, you know, you salute me and things, and we talk about when that day comes, when the Lord says, come up hither, and it's all over. No more messing around with this wicked world down here. No more messing around with the battle that goes on, on all the time, the struggle between the flesh and the spirit, and uh, all this horrible stuff that we go through. We're going to actually be able to finally greet one another face to face. What a beautiful day that's going to be. It's going to be a neat time to finally have the body of Christ all together. And not just us, not just each other that are alive today. How about meeting all the saints that have ever lived? And you're there shaking and hugging each other and stuff like this and you bump into someone, oh, oh, hey, hi, Paul. Wow, you know, it's pretty neat. And, you know, and you're looking at, oh, hey, hey there's D.L. Moody. Hey, how you doing? You know, and you looking and here's the saint over here. Hey, it's John Huss. Hey, hey, John. You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be a wonderful time. But until then, we have work to do. Be diligent about the things of the Lord. So let's close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for the ministry. I thank you, Lord, for your word. And I thank you that uh, there are so many people out there. It's such an encouragement to see um, brothers and sisters in Christ that have grown, that uh, are learning from this ministry, Lord, and that are coming alongside and helping me. And uh, not tearing me down, but uh, seeing, Lord, that they don't have to be in agreement with me 100%. But uh, we're all here on this earth, and we all have a part to play. And I pray, Lord, that if there's somebody out there that does not know what part they're supposed to play, I pray, Lord, that they would turn to you and that they would, that, uh, they would really seek to know what your will is for their lives. And that they would follow that. And that they wouldn't stay in the background any longer, but they would come out to the forefront and join in the battle, Lord. And uh, be willing to get some rebuke and get some, some suffering, Lord, so that they might uh, reign with you in the millennial kingdom. Help all of us, Lord, to, to stay strong in these evil times. And, and to be careful, Lord, what we say about uh, the people that you've put in power. I know I need to be careful about that myself, Lord. I know I've slip sometimes and I start to attack the, the flesh when it's the principality really that's controlling things. And Lord, I just uh, I ask that you would help all of us to be busy about your work, that we would be careful to maintain good works, that we be not unfruitful. And I just uh, pray all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, that's going to be it for the book of Titus. I have a bunch of different sermon ideas coming up here. Not sure what I'm going to be doing next week yet, but uh, stay tuned. We'll see what uh, transpires. I'm definitely going to have uh, some neat things coming out here in the future. So please keep us in your prayers. And that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you until we meet again.